morning friends and welcome back to another exciting session of an uh, has lecture series now today's discussion is going to be on non competitive antagonism uh, now if you are new to my channel please watch my lecture on competitive antagonism because this session is next in the series to that so has a relationship with that but anyway if you are new then maybe you watch that and come back to this anyway whatever is the case so we talk of non competitive antagonism so remember those school days uh, the example i gave to you in uh, my lecture on competitive antagonism the same example we take now here we are considering two boys same class okay it can be girls also whatever it might be so two boys so one person out of that wants to excel in academics so studies a lot puts in a lot of effort as far as studies are concerned and wants to achieve that first rank always but the other is totally ignorant and is not bothered about his studies he just wants to run a half marathon so he's kind of a sports activity person athlete person so his goals are different from the number one so two different boys same class but two different goals there is no competition between them an athlete cannot compete with a person who is academically oriented right they can be the king of their uh, what i can say their the specialities in their life but there is no competition between them okay so that's what is what you call at uh, you know a part of non competitive antagonism or there is no competition between them now after some days now this scenario has to change after some days what is happening is that the first boy is who wants to excel in academics he is getting influenced by the sports activity of the second boy you know he always sees those second he always sees that second boy running around he is maintaining his fitness level so he is all the way active more active than what the first boy is so over a period of what has happened is that the first boy has started losing interest in his studies and is slowly gravitating towards the actions of the second boy so this is what is a indirect effect of the second over the first okay the second boy his goals are no way same to the first boy but he still produces obstacle to the first boy now this is what we call it as a classical practical example of non competitive antagonism no competition but still a obstacle so remember this example it's very much true to you know non competitive antagonism we also face so many problems in our life we also get influenced by people who we are not related to but who are there to distract our goals right away okay so that happens with us so that's the best example i can give for non competitive antagonism so here is a figure which i taken it from the internet but is very much of significance as far as non competitive antagonism is concerned so here is a natural process of a drug or a ligand getting attached to receptor a uh, conformational change within the receptor and the signal then passes on the natural process and there you have the non competitive antagonist you have the two drugs one is antagonist one is agonist antagonist is getting attached to one side agon is getting attached to one side so two different substances two different sites of action that's primarily what happens in a non competitive antagonist so there is no competition between the two but what happens next is that once the non competitive antagonist fits on to the receptor once the non competitive antagonist fits on to the fits on to its allosteric site not a receptor allosteric site it brings about certain changes in the receptor it brings about certain changes in the receptor so that the agonist may not be able to first of all it may not be able to get attached to the receptor or even if the agonist gets atta attached to the receptor the functional capacity of the receptor is brought down so it might be that uh, the maximal capacity of a receptor to work would be just 50% so indirectly uh, a non competitive antagonist is producing obstacle to the drug receptor consists drug receptor uh, phenomena so as i said for in the example so it's a indirect way of affecting the action of uh, the drug so that, that is what is a non competitive antagonist in short now if i want to uh, quantify non competitive antagonism uh, here is a good uh, graph of that 
Now here you can see a DRC of agonist, a full-fledged DRC, which is good DRC, and then you have agonist which is given with a non competitive it's also called as irreversible antagonism. So what happens is that uh, with a irreversible antagonist or with a non competitive antagonist, you cannot attain the efficacy which uh, with the agonist to the maximal 100%. It has to be always less than that. So efficacy gets affected. Flattening, important word is flattening of the DRC occurs if you are trying to give a agonist with a irreversible antagonist okay, or with a non competitive antagonist. Even if you increase the levels of increase the concentration of our agonist, it is not going to cause any positive impact on the outcome. No, it is not going to cause any positive impact. On the other hand, if you increase the amount of antagonist, the flattening of the DRC will be more. Okay, so because it's an irreversible change in the receptor. Okay, so it cannot be like you just increase agonist levels and the receptor will be functional 100% again. So here there would be no change as far as potency is concerned, but efficacy wise, the efficacy of agonist will start going down and down and after some time it will be seen that if you increasing still the dose of antagonist, the full flattening of the DRC will occur. So there is a difference between how you treat a, a DRC, how you see a DRC of a competitive antagonist and how you see a DRC of a non-competitive antagonist. So here there is a flattening of the DRC. It all depends upon the concentration of the antagonist of how much flattening of a DRC should occur and here you can see it clearly that was the height attitude, that was the efficacy attitude with agonist alone and that is the efficacy attitude with agonist and a irreversible antagonist. Again that is important for you to know. So that is uh, the summary of the lecture. So we have two different substances which are structurally not similar to each other. Okay, uh, So that that is basically thing that you need to know. They are structurally different substances. They bind to two different sites but indirectly affect uh, the action of the agonist drug receptor phenomena. Antagonist affects the receptors in a irreversible way. Uh, and that is a irreversible process. We do not see this process of non competitive antagonism in clinical practice to uh, uh, that extent. Um, so that that is what is uh, important. Flattening of the DRC occurs and it is not dependent on the concentration of agonies. So remember that just increasing levels of agonies is not going to change the scenario and uh, that is what is important as far as non competitive antagonism is concerned. So that was my quick take on non-competitive antagonism. I hope you like my session. Please stay tuned to my channel. Do subscribe to my channel because your subscriptions do matter to me uh, if I want to move on teaching you more on clinical pharmacology. Uh, thank you. Bye. Have a good day.